Today, the Financial Times wrote as good as it gets about the markets. And I think that's actually a little bit too aggressive. It's not as good as it gets. It's too good to be true. I think the current valuation of the markets is just extraordinary and nothing we can rely on. As a matter of fact, when I made my ex expert prognosis at the beginning of this year, I already said I think the markets are way too expensive. Now they increased even further. And today we are looking back at our investment performance. And you remember, we invest 100,000 francs every year. In the meantime, in the third portfolio, so we have invested 300,000 over the past three years. Most of it in stocks, a little bit is still left in cash to invest in the next couple of weeks. What is the result? 300,000 Swiss francs in, it's now a whopping 357,000. Definitely too good be, to be true. That's a Swiss franc return of 19%. Now, one thing you can do is you can go and look where this return came from, but that's useless. As a matter of fact, if you look at the couple examples that I have in my portfolio, they are completely, uh, uh, completely not understandable. For instance, I bought Peugeot when a lot of people said, how crazy, you know, nobody buys a Peugeot car. Well, that's probably true for rich investors, but a lot of people do because the stock increased by 45%. I bought BMW at the same time, and I think it's still at a loss today. I bought media companies like Axel Springer and RTL, you know, two kinds of media companies in Germany. One made plus 17% Axel Springer and the other one, RTL, made exactly the same amount as a minus, minus 17%. Does that make sense? It definitely doesn't make any sense. Even worse, if you look at Siemens in my portfolio, a huge company, a global industrial conglomerate with an excellent reputation, lost 50% on the stock price. Does this make any sense? It doesn't. That's why I recommend don't look at the individual stocks, look at your entire portfolio because that also contains the dividends, something that doesn't go into your portfolio statements. If I look at the entire portfolio, I have this really good result in Swiss franc of 19.2%. But that's really not the full picture. What you have to do, you have to look at it in different uh, currencies. And we are doing that from now on because the currency gains are also part of your portfolio. So if I look at the exact same portfolio in Euro, it's just 9.3%. If I look at it in US dollars, it's also less, 16.8%. And if I look at the portfolio in British pounds, it's 25, almost 25% plus. So depending what currency you take, when you look at your portfolio, you have a complete different picture. And I think that's very important. Many Swiss people think they have to spend their money in their retirement in Swiss francs, but that's not true at all. Switzerland imports half of its products from Europe and the world, which means if the Swiss franc gets more expensive, these products get cheaper. So looking at your performance in other currencies makes perfect sense, especially if you invest in these other countries. So if you invest in Europe, you should look at your return in European Euro, in euros. And that doesn't mean that you make a loss in Swiss francs just because the Swiss francs appreciate. Because as all things that go up, eventually they will come down again and the same happened to the Swiss francs. So that's why the return in Swiss francs is fantastic, while in Euro it's not that good this year. This was my analysis of my portfolio. And the most important thing I want, want to give you back for your portfolio is don't look at individual stocks. They make no sense at all. Look at your entire portfolio and look at it in different currencies, especially in the currencies that you're invested in. I wish you good luck with your own investment. Thank you.